Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop for this late night episode of Bob TV. I'm rolling here guys, I got everything done today I wanted to. I got my panel lines finished for my rivets and uh, got my sealer sprayed on and got a coat of white on there. I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. I'm going to wet sand it and uh, put another coat on there yet tonight. In the meantime, I want to try out Vacuum decanter. What these are called? Decanters. Degassers. Okay. Got me some stuff ready to roll. I'm gonna put a paper towel down at the bottom. Okay, take my plastic on there a second. It's going to be way too much, but I'm going to mix it up when it's longer. Yeah, it'll be alright. Try. Now we're gonna try and do this. Okay. I want to lay up one of my instrument panel dillies. Okay. Oh, it's been a busy day. I got that second coat of resin on Chris's Mustang. See, this is real thin now. You see how thin it is now? Wait about three minutes. <laughs> it does not take long to start firming up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a thin coat on here and vacuum it down. And once this stuff starts firming up a little bit, I'm gonna put another coat on there. Just for a little build up. Right now we just want to suck it down into the bottom the switches go down in there pretty deep. I made, I, I made a mistake making this mold and I figured it out how to make the next ones better. But I wanted to get this uh, vacuum chamber before I did any more because it also is good for making molds too soaks all the air out okay Man, 
Looks like it's boiling almost. I was taking. You guys see it down in there? It's like boiling. All the air is coming out of it. Some hole I got. 28 pounds, 27 pounds, negative 27. Now, can you guys see? So it's also taking all the air out of that. Too, and uh, from the bottom of that mold all the way down to them deep switches. I'm gonna wait just another minute or two. See, how it's already getting thick. See it. Yeah, there needs to be more in there from the get go. It might be alright. You know? 
know, if you don't try it, you don't learn. That's just how it is, you know. See, I could use this on bags too, people. Hook this up to a, a vacuum bag and turn my pump off. And I got a little bit of air, you know. But then it's holding. It's not leaking. I got a gauge. If I do got a leak, it'll tell me if my bag's leaking or not. Which I know anyway. <laughs> It's holding. Okay, you see that finish? That's perfect. I put the second coat on just the right time. You see how it's shiny? What that glass actually does, besides holding the wood grains together, is it gives you, it makes it possible to get a perfect thin layer of resin on there because that's what we're painting on. That's our painting surface. Guys, if I didn't fill this with resin, you'd be there with glazing putty. You know, them holes got to be filled with something. And if you do it right, you don't, uh, saves you a whole bunch of work, man. You know, I'll scrape this down with the razor blade. And, uh, it's gonna be ready to paint. I'm gonna start priming on, but I got to a few other things I got to do to it first. Any kind of all the trim these edges. And you know, you want to run your epoxy past your edge a little bit. So you can get a nice trim. If your epoxy don't go all the way to the edge, you're trimming a, a ragged edge, you know. That's what you're going to have. Just got to make sure you get that epoxy. past the end of your wood, just, just a little. See, but you get, you get no structure strength from this at all. Oh, my light come on. You get no structure strength from this at all. And Lord always used to tell me, if you're trying to grain, gain strength, from, a, from your glassing job, you built the plane wrong. But see, that's in the, the wood, wood plane world, you know, that's not a composite theory. Because you don't gain no structure from this glass, you don't want to, You'll, it'll end up way too heavy. You know, you can't do wood and composite. So I have to put some six ounce cloth on here and it, it'd never fly. It'd be so heavy, it'd get off the ground. So you gotta go with what you got. You got a wood plane, glass it like a wood plane. You know? If you're trying to hold your airplane together with your finishing cloth, that's all this is. It's, it's like monocoat. It's just for finishing. It's just a, a surface to hold your paint. 
And uh, the, the glass holds the, the wood grains together, keeps it from cracking. But I've known people that, that, that do this without putting cloth on. Yeah, I know, guys, I've seen it. And you just can't get that stuff smooth enough. But I know a couple people that's done it. They'll put three or four coats on and sand it in between and thinking they're going to make the perfect base for the paint. And then a couple months down the line, they're sitting in the sun, their wood starts cracking. Look at my wood's cracking, Bob. Inside of here tomorrow too. Start the cockpit area. Get rid of that, rid of that wood grain. Bam. Bam. Here we go. That looks good. Then I'll take a razor blade when I get ready to scrape this. Take a razor blade and hold it real tight and just go over. I'll show you. I'll just show you. You don't want to sand this stuff. Because your sandpaper will get in there and cut the grains of your cloth. You know, so just hold that brand new razor blade, okay? Hold that dude real tight, straight up and down. See all that stuff flying off of it? See all that? And man, it just, it's so smooth. Just it flies off of it. You see that stuff flying? It's going everywhere. And I actually look the plane over real good for any filling. I try and get by with the less primer as I can. You know, and if you could see something that needs filled before you prime, you know, you ought to do it. You guys see all that? It's just flying off. Shoo. 